Alrighty, so it is time to review Loki season one on Disney Plus. Let's get right to it. Alright, so I'm gonna let you guys know right now, it's kind of hard to talk about the Loki series without addressing the spoilers, but I will tell you this. The series takes place right after Loki escapes in Avengers Endgame during 2012, and is it's much better than and different compared to WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I do recommend watching this show. But for right now, click off of this video if you haven't watched it. So with that being said, let's get right to it. Alrighty guys, so now it is time to talk about Loki. Loki is so fun. It's enjoyable. It's fun to see a different version of Loki. Practically the version of Loki that we get in Thor Ragnarok, which is really great to see. And honestly, it it just it's different. It's not anything politic wise at, at all. It's not a wife having or it's not like a girlfriend or a wife a wife. I don't know exactly. Did they didn't really explain it in Infinity War, but basically it's not somebody dealing with drama because their loved one died. It's not dealing with the fact that a, that America won't allow a black Captain America. It's really different. It's really unique and it, compared to that. And Loki in this series is really good. Um, it's re and um, honestly, it's fun. The final two episodes, I would say, are the most fun and energetic moments of the entire series which is really fun you get to see so many different versions of loki obviously within the second episode they dropped the female loki which was nuts to see but honestly i wasn't surprised because after the first episode i looked at the cast and then there was a female actress there's two of them actually that were casted um as an official character one of them happened to be sylvie who is the female loki which is really interesting because like she's a mixture of enchantress and loki at the same time and her name is Sylvie. It's really interesting. Um, we also get to see President Loki, which is a different version of Loki than Tom Hiddleston's and Loki. He, um, still played by Tom Hiddleston. And then you also got um, kind of like the bragging Loki and everything. Like he wiped out the Avengers. He ruled Earth and everything. He has Thor's. A bit different version of Thor's hammer, which is weird in a way. Uh, I think it's bashful Loki. And then you got the classic Loki, which it was really awesome. Um, to see in the final second episode when he just like just makes Asgard practically, which was really awesome. And then um, you also got um, young Loki who ended up killing Thor, um, and that was kind of referenced in Thor Ragnarok, which was really interesting. Apparently, when they were little and everything, Thor liked snakes and everything. Loki turned to a snake and he changed it back when Thor picked him up and then stabbed him. Um, and basically killed Thor, so I'm assuming that's his Nexus event and everything, which was kind of interesting. Um, and also you get a, you get an alligator Loki, which was really weird. It was one of the weirdest things ever. Um, but this show has so much creativity and uniqueness within it, within it. Um, obviously, um, the fact that... Um, Loki, and, and like in the show, like it's kind of mentioned a lot that Loki and Sylvie have a little bit of tension between each other, and not like, like they want to kill each other kind of tension, but kind of like romantic kind of tension and everything. Um, turns out that Loki likes Sylvie, which is really weird because it's a different version of him and everything, and honestly it's really interesting to see um, the chemistry between them two because it's so good, but... It's a little awkward and was hard to get used to that, but it, I still enjoyed it. Um, and then they kind of revealed both, I don't know, kind of like um, revealed that Loki was gender fluid, which honestly, like, I was fine with it because they didn't reveal everything that revolves around being gender fluid, which I was fine with. And obviously, because of Norse mythology in the comics, it made sense for him to be gender fluid, which I was kind of fine with, but. Yeah. Um, besides that, um, it was really great. I really enjoyed Mobius in this series. Um, I really like his character. He's funny. He, um, 
And so let's talk about the TVA real quick. Um, and also King the Conqueror later on. So the TVA w um, obviously is the time um, author variant authority, um, basically the time police, basically. And um, we're like being told that like, oh, these timekeepers, these great people, no, no, like these great gods like can like just like flow the like has like keeps in check the sacred timeline and everything and um it's like you don't have the choice to do anything which is kind of weird like you yeah you get to do your own things but apparently according to the timekeepers they allow it but um obviously if certain things isn't allowed to them and everything that causes a nexus event and everything um and eventually starting a multiverse of war, which they did mention, which is what we're actually about to get into with Multiverse of Madness, um, potentially Spider-Man No Way Home, and season two of Loki when it comes out, and a Man and the Lost Quantum Mania, which is gonna be awesome. But um yeah, and then it's revealed later on when they prune or erase a timeline, it's like they can't like it's not completely erased like a snap of a finger. It's just kind of like tossed at the end of the world and everything and everything. So basically it's a junk world that they just toss in, which honestly, I thought that's what um, they were going to reveal later on. I can't remember the planet, um, but it was in Thor Ragnarok, um, Gladiator Trash Planet. Um, can't remember what it's called, but I thought they were going to show off that, but apparently they did it. Um, but there was a nice Easter egg that they showed off, and it was Frog Thor. It was pretty cool. They also showed off the Thanos copter and a giant um, yellow jacket helmet, which was really interesting. And the Avengers Tower in the background reviewing King, which obviously they were applying that the fact that King the Conqueror is going to show up, which a lot of people thought that that wasn't going to happen, but apparently it did. And I loved the performance that the actor did for King. Um, definitely a complete different expectation for this different type of king only to find out that the king the conqueror that eventually we're going to get the king prime that we're eventually going to get is going to be saved for the avengers movie so basically we're just kind of giving this getting these other kings um until we get um king prime the conqueror which is going to be really exciting to see but um honestly loki was very fun very enjoyable i can't wait for season two i'm really looking forward to it the finale was absolutely insane destroying the sacred timeline and earlier i actually forgot to mention sylvie broke the timeline creating the what if series which is about to what we're about to actually get into which is going to be really exciting but at the end of the series they actually break the sacred timeline officially creating the multiverse which is really awesome and i can't wait to see um how this affects ant-man and the wasp quantum mania Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, and especially Spider-Man No Way Home because of the fact that Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield are supposed to show up. So, anyway, that is my review of um, Loki. I'm going to give this show a 8.5, a 9 out of 10. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's a really great show. There are some moments to where it's just kind of like, okay, but... This show is really good, and I highly recommend watching it. So, so with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Peace out.